So close to being game over with the adult Tetris. Half of a row to go to fill this shed up. Um, that'll probably get done today. And then it's just time to refill under the catio here because this was full at one point, but as you can see, <laughs> The supply is getting pretty low, so after that it'll be time to replenish what's under there. This dolly has been great though for just stacking up a bunch of wood and rolling it over here so it's easy to grab and put inside the camper. My dad brought over this battery box for me, so I'm pretty pumped about that. Now I'll finally have a place to put my spares from the spare solar there. Yeah, it's got a latch here, so if you want to, because this is closed, you can put a lock. I'm not really going to have that problem here where I have to worry about somebody stealing my batteries that I know of. <laughs> but the option's there. So, there's room inside, I believe, for six batteries total, because I'm pretty sure you can put three um, in each row. So you could put three in the top here, and you could put three down here. This is kind of a sliding door, so if you need to get at your batteries. So that's pretty cool. I just got to clean it out a little bit, get rid of the leaves. And I'm guessing this hole here and here is for any connections you need. If you need to connect your top batteries to your lower batteries, you can do so through this when the door is closed. And likewise, with all these holes, I'm guessing it's for if you have any connections or you need solar or anything to go to your batteries, you can do it through these holes. So that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, it's got vents for the batteries. Obviously, the holes help too, but there's a vent there, a vent there. Pretty stoked. Hopefully, I can do something with this and get it all set up and geared up before winter. You guys already know I have a battery box on the front end of the camper for um, the house batteries, which are in there. It's a little dirty in there. I should probably clean that out too, but yeah, this part, I've got one hand, so this part opens up so you can access them easier. And the entire back of this thing is vented. There's a screen. And there's this here. You can put a lock there if you need to as well. But yeah, that's for the front batteries, and now I have a box for the batteries out behind. Last night, I tried to fill the water tank in the camper with this top tank, and it was frozen. It's three degrees outside now, so I don't know. <laughs> three degrees Celsius, that is. I don't know if it's going to be warm enough yet, but let's give it a try. If this tank were in the sun, which it's not, I'm sure it would thaw a lot quicker on days like this as well, but let's give this a try. Kind of nervous. Oh, no. Sounds to me. Yeah, no. Still frozen. It's that time of year, man. I am soon going to have to winterize this thing. Yikes. You can see I've got ice where there was water on top of this barrel here. That's all ice. Yeah, I can actually hear in here. There's a layer of ice formed at the top of this barrel. I mean, it's only half full, but yeah, the top part of the water is just a little layer of ice. I don't know if I ever showed you guys how I fill up the uh, generator with gas. So let me show you real quick how I do that. This tank's full. So since the generator's under there and I don't want to have to pull it out every time I need to fill it up with gas, I'm just going to keep the jug of gas up here and basically take a siphon hose and siphon the gas from there down to the tank of the generator. Handy dandy siphon hose. Thing gets a little stiff when it's laying under there in the cold, but uh, this end in here, and I just get this bottom end lined up, twist it around. There we go. It's 
pretty stiff, so that can be a good thing. Now it's going to stay. And there we go. Now it's just a waiting game. That gas is just being siphoned from the can directly into the generator tank. Yeah, this thing does display your gas level too on this little screen here. Oh, the gas just ran dry. See that? It just stopped. But yeah, it displays your gas. It shows your hertz, I believe, and your amps. Um, but yeah, sometimes I don't always pay attention to that screen. And the other day, the generator just kind of like shut off on me. I assumed it was gas. I went ahead and added gas to it. I shouldn't say the other day. It was the other week. <laughs> um, it stopped working. It just shut off. And... Uh, I assumed it was gas, I added gas to it, and then it started up and stayed running. But this generator, and I think most generators now as well, have an automatic shut off too if you have low, low oil. So that's a good feature to have because obviously we know how bad it would be if it uh, just ran out of oil while it was running. Time to go get gas, fill up my three jerry cans, and fill up my truck too, because it's damn near empty. I've got to get my lotto tickets checked too, so if you guys see that I have a boat or a new motorhome in the next video, it means I won the lotto. Canadian gas prices, man. 92 cents a liter. I didn't win the lotto, by the way. I won two dollars and I had that taken off my gas. So, I'm heading to go do something kind of sad right now. But I'll cut back in a few minutes and talk about what exactly that is. sure you know what this means. It's time to put the sriracha scoot away for the winter. I don't know how anybody else does it, but with this stuff, you're basically putting one ounce of this in a gallon of gas. Um, last year, I think the neck of this thing was pretty much an ounce, so... And maybe I used a little more because it could be more than a gallon of gas in the tank. So I'm not going to measure it out. I'm just going to pour what I think is roughly an ounce or more right into this can. I use premium gasoline for the scooter. So I'm going to pour this directly in that. Go ahead and put it in the tank. And yeah, then I run it for a little bit. I just want to make sure that, you know, the stabilizer is going all through the lines. So I might go ahead and just drive it up and down the driveway a few times. Do what I gotta do to make sure it's all through the lines. And then I'm gonna take the battery out, just put that somewhere where it's not gonna freeze all winter long, of course. Rough guesstimate here. Woo! Uh Hmm, maybe I put a little too much in, but is that a bad thing? I don't know. Hopefully not. No, no, don't mind me. Okay, so it's a little under five ounces. It was probably at the six ounce mark, so a little over an ounce is probably what I need for that. That's five liters, so it's over a gallon. And there's already a little bit of gas in here, so I'm just going to make sure I fill the tank up uh, with the gas in this jerry can. I'm going to fire it up and see where we're at gas-wise.
Now that I know where we're at gas-wise, I'm going to go ahead and fill this thing up. Definitely hard to see. Um, I have to keep turning this thing on because there's no way to really tell how close it is to being full. And you're not supposed to fill these things up in the filler neck. It says right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and start this thing up again and see where we're at with the gas. All right, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more and just make sure we are with a full tank. There we go, perfect, full tank of gas. That's what we want. That's just how I do it anyway. Full tank of gas with the stabilizer, remove the battery, and then for me, it's good to go for the winter. I know a lot of people like to go ahead and do a full oil change, filter change um, in the fall. That's probably the better option of the two, but I do it in the spring. I just did it this spring. I did a full oil change or oil filter change. And that's probably what I'll do again next year. Just do a full change in the spring. I didn't really get out much this year, unfortunately, but say goodbye to Miss Sriracha. You're welcome to come with us if you'd like. We're going to take her to her winter resting place. So here we are at Sriracha's winter home. You guys didn't think this was... You didn't think I was... No. Okay. Pretty cute looking shed, eh? Kind of looks like a tiny home. I'm kind of jealous. Kidding. This is way too small for me. Well, this looks simple enough to do, right? Lock this thing up in here. <laughs> we'll see. You guys get to be a fly on the wall. Well, I managed to get her in there. <laughs> a little bit of a struggle on that hump, and uh, I was just kind of trying to get a little bit of a run on, but this grass is, I don't know, a little mushy. Anyway, she's in there. The only problem is the door. I might have to try to take this thing off and see if the door will shut with that off. Hey, no problem. Tons of room now. But those loading ramps really came in handy. So now it's time to remove her battery. And that's it. What is, oh, there we go. The cover back on. There we go. Ready for her winter rest. 
One last thing to do, put this piece of cardboard under the front tire. See you next spring, Sriracha!